Never Trust a Zombie, Chapter 3, Praise Chorus. So you made a new friend, eh, Eric? Michael starts right in on it. Yeah, it looks like it. I can't be hanging on to you guys for the rest of my life, I reply. Our little guy is all grown up. Trent grabs Michael in a headlock and gives him a noogie. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. Rachel's an all right girl. She's usually really quiet. She moved here summer before sophomore year, but none of us really know her at all. Quite a feat in a town this size. Somehow her family pulls it off. Obscurity, I mean. This intrigues me greatly. Wow, yeah, I wouldn't expect anyone in Cranston to be able to remain anonymous for very long. I haven't even been here a week, and look at me. Well, Trent begins, they've done it. When she, do, when she introduced herself, we recognized her family name. It's on the slaughterhouse just outside of town. Apparently her great-grandfather started the slaughterhouse, but it has been in different ownership since then. Since him. Sorry. The name has never changed. Her dad is from Texas originally. For not really knowing her, you seem to know a lot about her, I say. Well, Trent probably knows her better than anyone else. He kind of almost dated her the first year she was here, Michael offers. I see. Almost? So one of you decided not to get into it? I ask Trent. Something like that. Trent doesn't seem to want to get into this discussion. He's changed and ready to head out now. I put my gym clothes back in my bag and remove the borrowed lock from the door. I have one more question for now. Slaughterhouse? Rachel said her dad runs a cattle ranch. Trent answers, yeah, Rachel's dad bought the ranch and slaughterhouse his grandfather started some years ago. So both. She wasn't lying. She told me once she was unsettled by her family's business. Michael chips in. Well, Eric, are you officially interested in Miss Sutton? Is that Rachel's last name, Sutton? Just to clarify. Yeah, Rachel Sutton of the Strange Suttons of Harrison County. We are headed out of the gym now. The Strange Suttons of Harrison County? Don't worry about it, man. Her family just has a reputation, Michael says. Trent adds. Rachel is an attractive girl, but also a strange girl. However, she's not she's nothing much as far as strangeness is concerned when it comes to her folks. What's that supposed to mean? I won't say I'm feeling defensive, but I suppose I am. There's some rumors about the family, something that isn't uncommon for outsiders. I'm not saying Cranston is a bunch of gossiping bumpkins, but some of the older folks in town are very traditional and not really enthusiastic about new or different lifestyles. So rumors get started. Rachel's a cool girl. She just wasn't interested in me. I can tell Trent is being sincere with me. He didn't like, he did like Rachel, but apparently she didn't like him. I'll have to ask about those rumors later. For now, I decided to be extra diplomatic. So, Trent, I'm not saying I'm going, let me restart. So, Trent, I'm not saying I'm going to go ask Rachel out right now, but if it gets to that point someday, go for it, man. But good luck to you. She's had a few guys ask her out now, but she never goes on a date with any of them. Did I say that wrong? Oh. I feel very, uh. Judgmental of my writing right now. Odd. <laughs> Let's just ignore that. Pretend someone else wrote the book. That might make it worse. I'll judge it even more. Okay, back to the story. Let me restart that paragraph. Go for it, man. But good luck to you. She's had a few guys ask her out now, but she never goes on a date with any of them. She'll hang out, but as soon as a guy asks, will you go out with me? She either makes excuses or avoids the guy like the plague. Well, all right then. I guess we'll see how it goes. What are you guys doing for lunch? I didn't know we were allowed to leave school. I told Rachel I'd meet her in the cafeteria today, but I'm all for getting out of the building for a bit some other day. I decided to get off the topic of Rachel for a moment, although I guess I didn't actually do that fully. We go to Josie's on Mondays. They have a good lunch deal to get rid of any excesses from the weekend. They go all out for Saturday nights, and a lot of food is eaten. So there's usually an excess, which becomes Monday's lunch. Michael's response seems a little Pavlovian. <laughs> okay, well, I'm not big on brown bag lunches, so if you guys are going out somewhere tomorrow, count me in, I say. Will do, Eric. I guess we'll see each other after school, Trent says. I'll see you next period in math, says Michael. Hey, guys. Eric, you coming to Josie's with us? Jessie pounces on us from behind, throwing one arm around her brother's neck and the other around mine, pulling me off balance a bit, but thankfully I don't fall. I didn't get the memo soon enough. I already made lunch plans for today, I say. I nearly forgot about Jessie since I saw Rachel. I'll admit, I was thinking about becoming interested in Jessie earlier in the day, but I guess I got distracted. Teenagers, so fickle. You made plans? Jesse asks. Jesse questions. Yeah, I'm going to the cafeteria, I answer. How is that better than Josie's? Advanced warning or not? That's a fair question from her. A fair question, Jesse. I guess I don't have a fair answer, as I have never eaten at the cafeteria here before, and Michael interrupts. Eric met Rachel Sutton in gym class. Oh, I see. I didn't know Rachel was even at school today. She looks to her brother, and he shrugs as he takes a smartphone from his pocket and starts tapping on the screen. She came in late. I ran into her by the water fountain and we started talking. Maybe we were drawn together because we were both foreigners around here, I muse. Perhaps, 
Well, I'm glad you're making friends. Don't be a stranger, though, huh? Jesse says. Of course not. I'll tag along with you all for lunch tomorrow, I promise. I offer up a Boy Scout salute, or what I assume would be a Boy what I assume would be a salute for a Boy Scout. I never was one myself. I don't actually know what they do. Something about holding a few fingers up on the right hand. I thought you were a junior anyway. They let you out of school for lunch? They let you out of school for lunch too? Jesse says, I'm a senior. I technically skipped junior year. I'm a senior with all the privileges. Yeah, all the privileges. Leaving the school for lunch. Let's head out, guys. Trent fulfills his group leader role and kicks off the lunch plans. Eric, catch you later. See you all later, I say. Jesse turns and smiles at me. Michael nods, and Trent, who has just put on his hat and pulled it tight, does his signature pinch and pull on the front brim. I like these guys. I guess I'm not as asocial as I usually tell myself I am. Maybe it just takes the right kind of people to help me out of my reclusiveness. And now on to the next level. I had to check to make sure I am recording. And I am. All right. The cafeteria has double doors, which are both held open by small hooks affixed to the wall. I enter and begin scanning for Rachel. Straight ahead is the food line with a small kitchen in the back. There's a cooler filled with bottled juice and water next to the cash register at the end of the line. And next to that, a small rack, rack of chips. There should be a of there. Missed that in the editing. Page 31. I should say of between rack and chips. The room is rectangular and has 10 round tables spread about, each with six chairs, none being occupied by Rachel Sutton, the pale girl. To the right is a door that leads outside. The door is closed, but I see that some kids are outside at the concrete picnic tables in the courtyard. The period start bell has already sounded, so it is lunchtime, and I'm a few minutes late after talking with my new click, so I expected she'd be here already, but I don't see her. My resolve falters, and I wonder if it is too late to run and catch the click. I'll check outside before I give up. I am hungry, and this is a cafeteria, so there's always the option of just getting food and eating lunch. On my way to the side door, I hear my name. Eric, aren't you going to get some food first? Before going outside, I mean? I turn around, and there she is. She must have walked in right behind me, or I'm blind. Either way, there she is. Hey, yeah, I was just looking for you. I thought maybe you were outside, so I was going to check first. Again, I surprise myself with how naturally I'm talking with her. Sorry I'm late. Here I am, she says cheerfully. Do you want to grab some food and then find a seat? I motion toward the lunch counter with my head. No, you go ahead. I'll grab a seat over here. I'm still not feeling well. I have some water. I'm just going to drink that, Rachel says. Oh, do you need anything? Tylenol or something? Maybe they have some saltines or bread. I can ask, I offer. No, thank you. I'm all right. I'm just still recovering, but I'm okay. Go get your lunch and I'll be right over here. Rachel points towards an empty table in the corner. Most of the tables are empty. There's one full table with some loud boys, another table with a couple of girls, and then two other tables with one person each. I say okay and then go to the line. The lady behind the counter introduces herself and asks, asks if I'm the fella from up north. I answer that I am, and she smiles warmly, welcoming me to welcoming me to Cranston. The people certainly are nice around here. The lunch provision is spaghetti with meat sauce, always a winner in school lunch form. Not. I can only imagine how hard the garlic bread would be. I add a bottle of apple juice and a bag of chips to the tray at the register. The same lunch lady meets me there. I pay and turn towards the table where Rachel is sitting. She's looking at me. I expect her to quickly look away, thinking she doesn't want me to know she's been watching me, but she doesn't. I smile at her. She just keeps looking at me, not really smiling, but not frowning either. Just relaxed and paying attention with her eyes. I head over. How's the food here? Judging by the crowd, I'd say it doesn't hold a candle to Josie's, huh? I ask. It's all the same to me. Cafeteria or Josie's, I mean. I'm not as impressed by the local cuisine as everyone else seems to be. I guess I just had enough cow to last my lifetime, she says. Right, your dad's a rancher? I guess you get your fill of cows after a while. Are they right near your house, or is the house separated from the livestock area pretty well? All I know about ranchers is what I learned from movies and reruns of Bonanza. We do have some cattle in a barn closer to the house, a few milkers. But most of our stock is significantly removed from our home area. They smell too bad to have them any closer. I just get sick of the smell, the lowing, the regularity with which they appear on our meal calendar, and also the smell. She laughs at, her, at herself, and I smile again. The only animals I've ever lived with are a couple of cats. That was years ago. We didn't take them with us when we moved that time. I was never really attached to them anyway, so I didn't miss them, I say. Rachel says, I like cats well enough. So you've moved around a lot? We only moved the one time. We used to live in Atlanta. This is quite different from me, Cranston, that is. I've never been to Atlanta, but I've lived pretty much everywhere else. Not really, but it seems like it. My dad is a hotshot in the business world. He moves around at different companies, takes over for a year or two, and then finds another group to get in with, and we move. I haven't gone to the same school for two years in a row since third and fourth grade. It almost happened at my last school. I was there for my whole junior year and then the first half of this year. It feels good to open up about my fresh <clears throat> ah, paragraph. 
It feels good to open up about my frustration over moving. So I continue. You know, I've really hated moving around so much. I've had a few good friends and I've missed them when we moved. I've gotten used to areas and haven't had to leave them. My parents try to be the constant foundation in my life, but they don't do much more than give lip service, lip service to that reality. My dad mostly. Mom makes an honest effort, but even she doesn't seem to fully appreciate what I've been what what I'm experiencing. Interestingly, I've always wanted to stay in I've always wanted to just stay in one place for a long time, but recently I've been thinking about how fast I'll be out of here as soon as I graduate. Even though my parents have implied they'd like to stay here long term. I don't know why, but they seem to really like this place. So you're going to leave as soon as you graduate? Going to college or going back to one of your previous homes? Rachel asks. Still hanging on to the feelings of resentment towards moving and the relief of venting, I keep my gaze fixed on the bottle of juice in my hand, which is where it rested after my monologue. Well, I guess I'm not going to leave directly after school is finished. College will be my destination. I don't actually have a school picked out yet, but I'm in the process of all that. I'd like to be here for the summer and then leave for school in the fall. I wonder if she's asking me if I'd be leaving for a specific reason or just to keep up the conversation. Well, the summer here is hot and uncomfortable, Rachel says. Nothing else follows. That's kind of awkward. Maybe she was just keeping up the conversation. I've experienced some hot summers. San Diego was hot. Phoenix was hot. I guess this will be more of the same, I say. Rachel just nods and takes another sip from her water bottle. I get. I ask her, so what are your plans for after graduation? You hinted at not being a super fan of Cranston. Are you headed back to ATL? That's what the kids are calling it these days, right? I resume filling my mouth with some of the worst spaghetti I've ever eaten. Cranston should stick with grilled cow. Yes, ATL. That's the way the natives say it in certain circles. I always just call it home. But I don't know if I'll be going back there or not. I'm still trying to decide on college, and my parents are here, so I'm not sure what, I, what I'm going to do yet. I always wanted to get out of the country and see some of the historic places we read about in textbooks, but I don't know if I'll get to do that or not. She seems to wince as she says the last part, not as much in pain as in fear or guilt, as though she is saying something she shouldn't. Are you okay? I ask. Yes, what? She looks honestly confused. You seem to wince. I thought maybe you were in pain. Something to do with your convalescence, perhaps? Sometimes I talk like a professor. I attribute it to my preference for reading old fiction. Oh, yeah, just a little pain. She hesitates and then says, I'm surprised you noticed that. You're very perceptive, Eric Sterling. I don't remember telling you my last name. I do the best horror movie dramatic pausing I possibly can, letting all emotions drain from my face. I guess I'm a better actor than I realized because my pale friend Rachel seems to become even paler and she looks as though I caught her in a terrible lie or cover-up job. I thought you did. You must have. I wouldn't have known it. She stumbles along until I interrupt. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, I introduced myself with my last name before. Sorry, I was just having a little fun. I laugh. Oh, haha. Ha. I guess I'm a little gullible sometimes. It's not that I've been asking about you or accidentally overhearing things in the office this morning. I promise I'm not a stalker type, she says. I didn't think she was a stalker type until she said it. Funny how that works. I'm pretty sure I gave her my last name, but she certainly looked like I caught her in something, like she observed. I'm pretty perceptive. So what did you what didn't you hear about me in the office this morning? I raise one eyebrow and test the tensile strength of the garlic bread by ripping it in half. Not as bad as I thought, actually. Well, I didn't hear that you just moved in, just you and your parents. Dad's a big corporate guy. Mom stays home. I also didn't hear that you are somewhat of a genius academically, as far as school is concerned, but not very much of a people person. She reports back to me as though she had been rehearsing it. Wow, you didn't hear much at all, I guess. Trent was right, I say. What did Trent say? She asks. Well, he was just telling me that Cranston has a bit of a reputation for gossip and rumors. That's all. But that wasn't all. He told me she is kind of strange, and her parents are too. I hope my face isn't as telling as hers was, or that she isn't as perceptive as I am. Oh, she says. No expansion or agreement. Maybe she agrees, maybe she doesn't. Maybe she doesn't want to discuss Trent. Maybe I don't either. So Trent said you two almost dated once. What? Well, if I didn't reveal anything in my facial expression before, I'm sure I will now. Beginning with a sigh, she says. Yeah, sophomore year, my first year here. Trent and I were becoming pretty good friends. He asked me out, and I didn't really want to pursue that avenue, so I kind of stopped talking to him. I guess I didn't really handle it well, and it came across as though I had been leading him on or something, and then just stopped talking to him. But it wasn't like that. Rachel seems to be trying to clear up any rumors she might think I have heard. I really don't know what to say next. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. I mean, I hadn't planned on mentioning it to you, but I guess I just did anyway. He saw me talking with you earlier, and so we were talking about you, and he mentioned that. Shoot. I shouldn't have said we were talking about her. This is falling apart quickly. This is a more familiar method of conversing with a girl at school. I guess I'm settling into my own again. I see. Yeah, that was two years ago, and he can't seem to get over it. He never talks to me. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. It's 
It was funny that he's the one who said something to you about gossip. No one talks to me anymore. I know people talk about me, but I don't get talked to. You know what I mean? I wasn't much from dating my first year here. After And after turning down a couple of guys, which is pretty much everyone in a school this small, no one else ever asked me. And then rumors began, and pretty soon even the girls wouldn't talk to me. Rachel drops her eyes to the bottle in her hands. She rolls it over and over. The horizon line on the label graphic looks like an animated heart monitor line, rising and falling as the bottle turns. I'm sorry for bringing it up. I understand something of the culture shock you might have experienced. My last school had more people than this whole town. And as far as dating, well, I'm not exactly busy on the weekends, if you know what I mean. I smile sheepishly, trying not to come across as arrogant or condescending or anything but sincere and friendly. She begins, it's all right. I guess I'm just really bothered by the culture of the school, the whole town. It's exclusive. If you aren't born and raised in Cranston, then you are excluded. You make a good show, but it doesn't last. I think it is developed for the occasional tourist that comes through. They put on a good show of being friendly just long enough for the traveler to spend their money on some local food or products, and then it's back to hating the outsiders. Tourists that don't stay here very long never see it, but those of us who are permanent outsiders catch the full force of it when the appearance of friendship wears off. She looks me in the eyes and sighs again. I suppose that's why when I was in the office earlier and heard your name, I listened. I didn't notice you in gym until you started talking to me, but once we were talking, it seemed like I had just been rescued from being stranded on a deserted island or something. I hoped you'd be from somewhere else and we could be friends without all this small town baggage. I'll never forget the earnestness in her voice or the smile on her face right now. She's almost pleading with me, but not but not necessarily me, just another person to be your friend. I thought I felt lonely coming to this town, but I haven't felt anything compared to what she must what she seems to be communicating to me right now. Perhaps I will understand better after being here a little longer, but hopefully I'm not here long enough for it to come to that. For the time being, I feel compelled to be friends with this pale girl, and I don't mind that one bit. Rachel, I promise not to turn into a townie on you. I don't know... <clears throat> My delivery is weak. <laughs> Let's try this again. Rachel, I promise not to turn into a townie on you. I don't know what you... I don't know about what you've charged this town with, but I'll tell you, I would have been eating it up with a spoon the day we rolled into these here parts. Sorry, I just poking fun at the local jargon. But everyone I've met so far has been really nice. I ponder what she said about the tourist for a second and chew some garlic bread, thus creating a minor tension-building pause. She waits patiently. Now that I think about it, I could see how the reception I've received could play right into that scenario you've described. Eric, I'm not trying to turn you against your new friends or anything like that. I'm just saying I haven't had a great time here, and I'm sure it has to do a lot. It has a lot to do with me as well, but, well, I don't know. I'm not trying to give you a warning, just saying I had a glimmer of hope when I heard there was someone my age new in town. Now it's her turn to take a pause, only she doesn't have any heavy grit garlic bread to gnaw on, so she just looks longingly out the window. I hate how formal it sounds, but can we be friends, Eric? I miss having someone my own age to talk to. Don't you keep in touch with friends from Atlanta or, at all? I ask. Yeah, I do that. I mean, I miss having someone my own age to talk to in person, I guess. I nod and finish off the garlic bread. I pop open the bag of chips and offer them to Rachel, but she shakes her head with no with a smile. We sit in a relative silence while I crunch on the sour cream and onion flavored potato chips. I think about where to take the conversation next. How are the teachers for our next two classes? Tough? I ask. Nah, nothing in the school is tough. I felt like I stepped a few years backward in school when I came here. I imagine you feel something similar to that yourself. She responds. Spot on. It's only been a few classes so far, but yes. I haven't wanted to say anything yet since it is only my first day, and I don't want to offend anyone, but what they consider the fast track is closer to my sophomore experience than my first half senior year experience. I wonder if I could test out of school altogether at this point. Rachel asks, So do you think I'm strange? I mean, our conversation hasn't been very typical for our peer group. I don't think. I hope I'm not coming across as needy or clinging or something, although I suppose that's exactly how I sound from what I've said. There's something about this girl that makes everything she says seem normal. She uses facial expressions, but there isn't anything hanging on the words or in the way she says them. Her tone isn't flat, but it is somewhat dead. There's no implication behind it. I guess in a way that is strange, but I find it more appealing than strange. Not even appealing, but hypnotic, like the contrast between her pale skin and dark hair. Strange? Let me tell you something about strange. Four days ago, I thought I was going to get through the next few months of school without talking to anyone. Then I went to a restaurant with my mom, and she dragged me into a conversation with some kids standing in the parking lot. Next thing I know, I'm talking to them however briefly, but then two days later I'm at school and it's like I'm best friends with these guys. Then I meet a beautiful girl and actually start a conversation with her and find easiness about it. I've never experienced, find an easiness about it that I've never experienced before. You know strange? I give you myself over the past few days. I'm living strange right now, I say. But you didn't answer my question. She doesn't break her expression from when she asked her question. 
I know she heard everything I said, but she's waiting for my answer before she reacts. I don't think anything you've said so far makes it strange, I answered. So far, meaning you expect me to do or say something strange in the not too distant future. She still hasn't broken that same blank expression that accompanied her question. I'm starting to get nervous. I seem to be moving back and forth between my old awkward self and my new smooth self. Give me a second. I motion for a pause. Okay, Rachel Sutton. What's your middle name? She almost betrays a smile by a twitch of her mouth and her right eye. Esther. It's my grandmother's name. I come from a long line of Bible readers. Rachel Esther Sutton, I don't think you are strange, not with any negative connotation. However, you are not altogether contextually normal. If you will allow me to explain. You see, there is something that is, at least, superficially different about you in comparison to the other students here, thereby making you strange, or rather out of place with the status quo. I don't fully know what that is yet, but I am drawn to it. Additionally, as we are teenagers, I think it would be short-sighted of me to declare that I don't think you are likely to do anything strange in the near future, as it is simply part of our age-graded nature to do so. My final verdict is that I do not find you unappealingly strange, but do expect that you have the potential to be strange. Well, she begins, but I interrupt her straight away. My middle name is Stay. My mom likes names that sound like sentences. With that, Rachel breaks into a good laugh. At first, I just smile, trying to contain a laugh, but then it breaks free. We both laugh for a bit, and then she says, Thank you, Eric. Thanks for talking with me. I hope we can talk again. So do I. I think we should be able to pull it off, I say. Lunch is just about over. Do you know where the next class is? She asks, returning her water bottle to her backpack and zipping the bag closed. Yeah, I think it is in the same room as my last class. I noticed there aren't many classrooms. Right. Not a difficult place to learn, she says. We both stand up. I take my tray to the garbage and then drop it off at the return counter. When I turn around, Rachel is already out the door. That's odd. I thought she would have waited for me. Should I walk briskly to catch up, or is this some kind of message that I shouldn't be following too closely yet? I guess I'll just walk normally and see if she turns to look for me or slow up a bit. Either way, we're headed to the same room. How long is this chapter? Oh, okay, it's almost over. <laughs> At the end of the last class, Rachel is up and out of the room before anyone else. She sat at the desk closest to the door, so it isn't difficult for her to accomplish her task. Michael seems to be on a mission himself, getting out of the classroom with haste, probably to meet up with Chrissy. I decide to set, I decide to set out after Rachel. As soon as I step into the hallway, Trent grabs my arm and gives me a squeeze on the bicep, not like he is checking out my muscle tone, but like he's holding me back. At least that's how I interpret it, and given the two options, I think I prefer the second. Hey man, how'd your lunch date go? He was smiling and sounds sincere, but the grip on the arm and the lingering thoughts of what Rachel had said made make me a little suspicious, more than I would have expected. As though he picks up on my thoughts, Trent releases his hold on my arm. Uh, it was nothing like a date. We just chatted about moving and the social challenges it presents. Rachel's a really nice girl. I'm looking forward to talking to her again. How was your lunch? I asked, trying to change the subject. Did you make plans to drive her home or anything? Now my suspicion is increasing. Why didn't he answer my question? We didn't make any plans. I don't know anything about her plans for getting home from school. We never discussed that. What are you all up to this afternoon? I try again and change the subject. Perhaps I'll need to do some investigation work before I get wrapped up too tightly in Trent's click. Michael and I have basketball practice, then the girls and I have chores to do at home and homework. Weeknights aren't very free for us, but our parents are good at letting us have the weekends off, at least after morning chores. There's a lot to do on a ranch. Trent seems to be off the topic of Rachel, at least for the moment. Jesse joins us. Hey Eric, how was the rest of your day? Not bad. Got some homework. Didn't feel too didn't feel too far in the dark on the topics in class. I think I'm gonna make it after all, I declare. That's great. So what do you have planned for tonight? She asks, obviously fishing for details about my conversation with Rachel, or I'm just paranoid now. Homework, I guess. My dad said he'd be home for dinner tonight, so we'll have a family dinner. That's a rare occasion, especially this soon after starting a new job. He usually works long hours for the first few weeks and I rarely see him. So I guess dinner with the parents, homework, and probably television. My constant companion. You're a suburban, all right. That's what we call you guys that don't have farm or animal chores every day, Jesse says. Charming, I say. So nothing planned with Rachel tonight, then? Jesse smiles and waits for the answer, as though her question was perfectly normal and not prying in any way. This time her facial expression tries to cover up just how prying she knows her question is. Nah, the wedding isn't until next week. I try to make it sound humorously sarcastic, but I think it comes out as bitingly sarcastic. Ouch. Have you met our friend Michael? I think the two of you would get along great. She calls me on it, but she doesn't seem offended. Just laughs it off. Trent, seemingly amused by his sister, says, Well, I gotta get to practice. See you tomorrow, Eric. Unless you want to play some ball? No, thanks. I'm not one for basketball, I say. Maybe baseball in March, then? Huh? Trent suggests. Yeah, we'll see, I laugh. Trent turns to his sister. 
Jesse, find Christy and get on your way home. Tell Michael to stop drooling over my baby sister and get to practice. All right, Captain. Jesse gives a mock salute and turns away, waving to me as she leaves. Bye. I'm left standing alone outside the door of the classroom. I turn to my right to find my locker in order to deposit a few books I won't need at home. A locker door a few feet away from me closes to reveal Rachel standing behind it. She looks at me. Hey, I thought you left. You seem to get out of the class pretty quickly, I say, wondering how much of any of the recent conversations she had heard. Class was over, so I left. I thought you responded quite well to Jesse. She did that on purpose, you know. She saw me standing here when she walked over. But I don't think you responded the way she wanted you to, Rachel says, answering my unspoken question. Apparently, she heard it all. I'll have to apologize to her tomorrow. Both she and Trent seem pretty interested in my interaction with you. Are you sure you and Trent never actually dated? I almost didn't ask it, but then I decided to keep up with my new practice of being extra forthright in conversation. How much time do you have? I could explain my theories on the Jansen siblings, but it might take a while. Which direction are you heading in for home? She asks. You didn't overhear my address in the office this morning? I tease. Rachel proves she can dish it out herself without skipping a beat, she says. No, only your phone number, social security number, and favorite color. What is it then? I ask. Which one? She raises an eyebrow and leans her head forward a bit. Color, I say, as I take a step closer to her, but not encroaching upon her personal space by any means. Brisk magenta, she loudly whispers, hanging on the final syllable for an extra beat. I burst out laughing. I guess you weren't kidding. Now the only question is how did the school people know that one? Rachel, smiling, says, it's a mystery. I return to her question. I live up over on the other side of Maine. The guys told me your dad's ranch is a little bit outside of Cranston. Which direction? The opposite direction from your house. I'm back further up this road away. I didn't expect you were in my direction. No one is, but I thought I'd ask. I have my mom's car. Do you need a ride home? I offer. I actually have a car myself today. What with the rain and still recovering and all, Rachel says. Oh, good then. At least you weren't, you weren't walking. I don't know how far it is, but like you said, you're convalescing, so driving is better. I wish you didn't have a car, or I didn't. Do you have a bunch of ranch chores to do every day? I mean, when you aren't feeling ill? No, my dad has a full staff of workers. I don't have to do anything farm-related unless I want to. I'll be honest, I don't usually want to. Dad spends a good deal of time working, but Mom and I stay in the house or the yard and leave the farming and wrangling to the men folk. Awkward silence. We have no reason to stay at the school any longer, and we both have our own method of transportation. Neither of us knows where the other lives. This girl doesn't seem to mind talking to me but she might have a habit of walking away hastily as soon as the conversation ends. I can't let this conversation end without a plan to meet again, more than just class tomorrow. She breaks the silence. I guess I'll see you in class tomorrow? Yeah, no, yes, I'll be in class. I'll see you in class tomorrow. There's nothing to do around town tonight? See those straws? See me grasping at them? I think she does. No, not much happens around here that isn't planned. Are you a good planner? She asks hopefully. Not usually, but I wish I were. The open her eyes diminishes as I say this. With resolve, she says, good luck on that. I'll see you tomorrow, Eric. Stay sterling. Enjoy your homework. I have failed. Thank you, Rachel Esther Sutton. Same to you. See you in the morning. And she is around the corner. The end. Stay tuned for Chapter 4 next week. Bye. <laughs>